Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw an owl. Now, before I get into this, I can't help, uh, you know, acknowledging this classic meme. Uh, many of you have seen it, if not all of you, but I'll go ahead and splice it in right now. How to Draw an Owl. So yeah, I was almost a little hesitant to take this on as a topic because it almost seems like parody, the idea of teaching someone how to draw uh, an owl using a couple of circles. Uh, but we're not going to do circles, we're going to use a square. <laughs> so that makes it worthy of more seriousness. The square I've put here is four inches on all sides, that works out to around uh, ten centimeters, and then just a line right down the middle. This will help with the uh, line placement, and we're going to go ahead and begin by drawing the shape of this uh, great horned owl. Of course it doesn't have actual horns, but the feathers kind of form the shape of horns. Let's go ahead and get those lines into place. So you can see how the lines uh, coming here, this is sort of the side of the neck of the owl, comes up right to this point where the lines uh, meet here, uh, maybe just a touch to one side of that. And then because this uh, owl's head is turning a little bit in space, this area, this sort of horned feather area over here is considerably smaller than the one you want. Uh, now unfortunately these lines are not really touching anything related to the box, but this one actually uh, touches quite neatly on that point, so that can help you for placing that, and then you maybe just have to eyeball uh, the distance. I would say that this line of the top of the head is about one-third of the distance towards that uh, middle line. And uh, yeah, once you've got that in place we can move on to drawing. Um, it sort of is like the forehead that comes down uh, over the eyes. I'll do both of those at once. All right, so it almost looks like angry eyebrows at this stage, but of course it's really just the forehead structure. Probably keeps the sunlight out of the eyes, I would imagine. Uh, and then uh, when you look at the eyes themselves, this one that is closer to us a little bit is more of a perfect circle, whereas this one is uh, sort of squeezed into an oval shape. And you'll see that this line right across the middle lines up with the initial uh, crossbar line that we had put in there. Well, let's go ahead now and draw. Um, we're going to put in the beak. Uh, and then a couple of uh, curved lines here that start to get into this area of the plumage, you know, the sort of uh, light and dark areas of the feathers. So I figured I'd just go ahead and finish off all the initial guidelines. Here you see uh, the beak is surprisingly vertical, really very straight up and down, and this uh, lower part of the beak is largely hidden in shadows. Then you see this uh, area over here to the left and right, this curving area, that's going to go jet black later on when I pull out my trusty black prism, Prismacolor colored pencil. Uh, a lot of uh, contrast you're going to see. Uh, in this illustration. So if you can get hold of a black uh, uh, colored pencil of any kind, that's going to help you out a lot. Down here, this interestingly curved area of tiny little feathers that almost look like the quills of a porcupine or something, curving off to the left and then to the right. Uh, and then just a couple more lines here to start to get us into where we're going to add a lot of the um, patterning of the uh, feathers later on. But let's go ahead, I'm going to take a, just a bit of a break to sharpen this pencil, <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and we're going to start getting into the details, refining the final line work uh, of this illustration. Okay, so you can see I took a moment to erase all of the um, square lines that were there at the very beginning of the process. Now is a good time to do that. It would be a lot trickier to get rid of them later on. And we're going to begin by taking this uh, area of the horns, and uh, I'll lighten up these lines actually, especially in this area, because that's really just a guideline to help you figure out where to put these individual feathers. Um, that would, would be found in this area. I'd say, you know, five or six of them uh, become visible. The photo that I looked at, they didn't, these feathers didn't come to a point. They were a little more sort of rounded. Uh, but together they form this area that sort of reads as horns, maybe from a distance. Um, and then we're going to extend this area. What happens is the lighter feathering is on the top. Uh, and it's much darker here underneath, so uh, we'll keep this area up here light. I noticed some sort of curving, fluffy um, bits of feather right here at the base of the ear uh, on both of these sides. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put those into place. 
just a nice little extra detail. And then this, uh, you know, we've got a super straight line here. It's really not going to be quite that simple in real life. I think you want to maybe break this into a few different hills or whatever you want to call them uh, to make this a little more organic, what you would see in real life. And we're doing the same thing over here. I'm going to do this in time lapse. It's going to look a lot like this. Give me just a moment. All right, so you can see how this uh, that initial line helped us to get these feathers into place, sort of fanning out this one pointing upwards, this one pointing out to the sides, and then beginning to uh, point down as you get to the lower area uh, here. And I think maybe I should add just a few more of these fluffy little uh, feathers here at the base of the... Uh, almost looks like an ear, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I guess deep inside there maybe is the ears. They gotta have good ears, right? to go after the prey. Now when we get down uh, to this area, I guess I'll begin by uh, darkening in, just sort of temporarily darkening in this air, uh, circle around the eyes. Of course the eyes become a big focal point of the drawing. It's really quite dramatic, uh, you know, once we get in there later with the black colored pencil. But you might as well start to get um, a little bit of this border area in place right here. Now there is a sort of fluffy area of white feathers, at least on some uh, species of owl. In fact, I'm going to erase away a little bit here so as that we'll have a corresponding area of white over here. There's a little detail you might want to get in there. I noticed that this, the, the dark area of banding that goes all the way around the eye sort of splits off beneath what you know sort of looks like the tear duct area. Uh, so again, I'll do a repeat of that over here, keep it symmetrical. And apart from a tiny little uh, circle that I'm going to kind of rope off there, this whole pupil area is going to go completely jet black later on. I'm not going to worry too much about making it dark right now because, like I said, the color pencil is going to be our friend when it comes time to adding the real darks. Now let's get into some of this feathering that is really quite... Um, elaborate, I would say, in terms of the drawing, and you have to pay attention to uh, the direction of uh, the feathers and where they're headed off to. I would say basically, uh, as it is with so many animals, it starts down here near the, the sort of bridge of the nose and begins to head off. I'm going to just put some basic lines here to give you a sense of the directional flow of uh, the feathering here. Um, and what you can do is just sort of darken in right here. This area does, at least in a bunch of the photos I looked at, gets really quite jet black here. And then as you go up this way, and you're following with your pencil, creating this sort of directional flow of lines, um, you want to sort of restrict this mostly to this area between the two eyes, leaving it a little bit white almost as if he has uh, white eyebrows. Or she. Could be a she, right? <laughs> we don't know. I certainly don't know. <laughs> Maybe the owl experts watching this could tell you, what are you, are you uh, out of your mind? It's obviously the male of the species. In any case, um, what you can see me sort of following along uh, with those initial guidelines of the direction, always making my pencil flow uh, like so. Now what I notice is that, uh, at least in some species, there's these sort of spots. And you could go ahead and put those in first. I don't know if there's a super regular pattern to them, but they are, you know, spaced widely enough that you can perceive them as spots. And I'm going to just keep adding them in a somewhat random way as we go all the way up and across uh, towards the top of the head. Now as this top of the head is sort of moving away from you, I suppose the spots would become a little more like lines up in this area because just of the, them curving away, you don't see them quite so clearly as spots. And once you've got those in place, uh, if you have the patience for it, I noticed in a lot of these uh, photos Air, sort of banded areas of black lines, kind of like this. Uh, 
although in the end it w probably will look more like white lines because between these is where you're not going to be coloring in but you might be uh, shading in the surrounding areas but uh, again sort of in keeping with that initial uh, directional flow that we figured out you can see these sort of curving off in opposite directions to the left and to the right I think you know the the reality of the owl you don't have to get too concerned like I was saying earlier about patterns uh, being absolutely accurate I think it's going to be pretty forgiving mainly just because there's so many tiny little details that it al almost becomes um, difficult to perceive the difference between one area and the next it gets really very finely detailed and I can't do all of this real time but uh, I would say the key thing is to get those spots into place first sort of figure out where your spot your dark darker spots are going to be and then once you've done that get in there with these slightly curved lines we'll be refining this uh, considerably but you see me leaving this area right near the eyes as almost like white eyebrows I'm gonna leave that blank now I guess I might as well come in here right now and I'm gonna keep my pencil real low to the paper and just shade in this area beneath the uh, brow that sort of heads into the ears because that all is black feathering here and over here I'm going to do this quite quickly for now um, but later on we're going to be refining this into considerably more detail I think that's maybe the attraction of drawing an owl for a lot of people is that it uh, has all these details and if you can pull it off you'll be rewarded with this drawing that looks you know almost surprisingly detailed by the end of it um, now over here once we get past this eyebrow area let's say the eyebrow area ends right around here this is where these sort of curved things that I was drawing before can begin to reach all the way to the edge and maybe even start to head up a little bit into what looks like the ears like the Batman ears or whatever um, and as you get across to here you may even see individual parts of like a, a single feather and the patterning that occurs in that area but as I said most of this is just going to end up quite black right down here and once we get down to here this is another area where figuring out the directional flow of things becomes key so I'm putting in some sort of temporary uh, guidelines here to give you a sense of where I see the flow of the feathers uh, going beneath the eyes and of course quite symmetrical over here you're going to get the same kind of thing happening but across the bridge of the nose uh, it's maybe a slightly different story as they as these as the two areas kind of meet in the middle right you got it starts to flow across like like that and then in the middle these two areas are sort of bunching together as the feathers and it's sort of funny to talk about them as feathers because they're so tiny it almost looks like fur uh, it certainly is not feathers the way we think of like when you find a feather on the ground or whatever um, but you can see me sort of putting in some guidelines to help me figure out later on the directional flow this is all just sort of temporary stuff I'm pulling out my portable uh, pencil sharpener to try to keep things uh, reasonably keep the pencil lead reasonably sharp now I'm coming in here and again stick sticking with that directional flow I'm doing, doing these quick back and forth lines of the pencil this area here uh, is one of the defining traits I think of this great horned owl and I would guess a number of different species of owl um, and the nice thing about it is you don't have to get too uh, picky about you know controlling your pencil at this stage it all eventually is just going to read as black but what I would try to do if you want to go for some extra details try to get this area right in here to be um, a little more choppy so that it sort of looks like white fur or whatever poking in front of the black 
uh, area just behind it. So yeah, these back and forth motions of the pencil can help with that. Now, I'm afraid that trying to show the um, pencil work of this area would be so time consuming that it would make my video incredibly long. So I am going to give myself a little break here and just do this all in time lapse, this area surrounding the eye before we get to the beak. And then I'll come back and give you some pointers on what it is that I did, just to sort of conserve time. So give me a second here. We'll be right back. Alright, so you can see how I did this, and it just takes patience to keep doing the sort of back and forth motions of your pencil, uh, following that initial directional flow uh, that we had mapped out for ourselves. Um, as I said, over here it starts to get a little tricky, and also one thing that's tricky about this area is that this should be almost like white, this area around the beak. So for you to um, get the uh, texture into this area is a little bit challenging because the, the more lines you put in the darker it gets and then that becomes inaccurate to uh, what the this breed of owl anyway this great horned owl uh, looks like but there's a little bit of shade right here in between the two just above uh, the beak and speaking of the beak why don't we go ahead and do that uh, this I'm gonna just darken this in basically I'm going to leave a little bit of lightness in the middle where like uh, a bit of sunlight might be hitting it, but the beak is pretty much jet black. And I think, you know, at least from this point of view, you're mainly just seeing the front of it. And this sort of lower beak is largely hidden in shadow. We'll be refining this later on, but I think we should spend some time talking about the eyes. Now, uh, again, I'm going to darken in the pupils uh, much more uh, black with the uh, colored pencil, but let's get into this area of the uh, irises, which is going to be, you're going to get a fair amount of darkness here up at the top on both sides, um, where it is, the brow is sort of uh, shading it. But as you go lower and lower, and you want to, you don't want a whole lot of texture in this area because this is very smooth. You got to really let up on your pencil and let that stay a very pale, kind of gray. Now it's it's symbolizing yellow of the actual eye. If you wanted to do this full color, um, this is the one area that would have a lot of color, the iris, and it would be this sort of orangish uh, canary yellow. Uh, so you're going to see me do the same thing. I'm, I'm really letting up, going going low pressure, no pressure, no pressure, <laughs> on the uh, uh, eye of the owl, just to, you know, and you could even smear that around a little to make it nice and smooth. But um, later on, this, this part is really going to become a big focal part of the drawing because of the contrast, the extreme high contrast that we're going to get going. Um, but I just thought I'd show right now how the upper area here uh, is going to be fairly dark and then gradually lightens up as we head down towards the, the bottom of the iris. You can do a similar thing over here on this side. Again, you, um, I would say this is one of these ones where you almost need a, a black colored pencil. Because I could keep pushing down as hard as I can. Uh, in this area of the pupil, but it's always going to be a kind of a dark gray, no matter no matter how much effort I put into that area. So this one really will benefit when we come back later on with the black colored pencil. This area, also this whole area over here, very dark, is going to help a lot. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to this last little bit of plumage here. <laughs> I always think of Monty Python when I hear the word plumage. I wonder why that is. And um, this is another one where we figure out this directional flow. I'm just going to put some crude lines heading off to the left, sort of curving off to the left, also curving off to the right. 
This whole area just surrounding the beak, though, is largely uh, white feathers, or maybe like a kind of cream-colored feathering. So you almost have to be restricting a lot of your uh, shading to just beneath this area. And again, it gets a little spotty down here. There may be little areas of blackness, but a lot of high contrast black and white um, feathers sort of interspersed with one another right in this area. I had never really noticed until I started looking at photos what an interesting area this is here with the with the flow of these you know to me again almost looks like porcupine quill like tiny choppy feathers uh, but again you do see sort of like periodic splotches of uh, black all of this going to be refined in greater detail later on this is one of these ones where I can only do so much of it uh, time-lapse sad to say and um, you know you're gonna see me refining this area later on mostly in time-lapse this area of the feathers uh, I suppose I should acknowledge that this this area up here isn't just uh, completely white there is um, you know again a little bit of patterning up here to me it's not super clear what the pattern is in the photos that I look at but you, you can't go wrong having it sort of follow the curvature of of this area sort of defining the structure around there and let's just do over here because it's a little more visible I'll show how this area also um, you figure out your basic directional flow and this one's relatively simple right you can see me making these lines that sort of show the the flow of the feathers and up here in this area, it really gets very sort of uh, tiny little dots almost. And when we come in and, and if I take my time, it'll all be in time lapse, but I'll take my time uh, sort of refining this area. There's so many little details. It's really, it really is well suited for pencil drawings, I gotta say, the, the, the great horned owl. Just because of all this black and white, the interplay between the blacks and the whites, but you can see me sort of putting these little you know, so vaguely circular kind of areas of black interspersed uh, with the white feathering. And that may be all that we can do in terms of talking about, um, you know, in real time adding shading to this. I am going to have to kick it into time lapse and you're going to see me doing frankly an awful lot of stuff in this next part um, just to finish off the drawing but I would say in general maintain your patience folks once you start feeling like you're losing patience take a break get up walk around do something else come back later on you don't want to try to rush your way uh, through a drawing project like this. It, it is worth putting the hours in. Uh, you're going to see me zip through all of this in time lapse, but that doesn't mean that I did it quickly. No, it's probably, I'll, I bet I put another 45 minutes uh, to an hour in starting now as I begin to uh, refine this illustration. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that in time lapse, and we'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, I'm afraid my video has become a sort of real-life version of that meme because I crammed in so much of the detail work uh, in the time-lapse at the end. But, you know, hopefully I showed you enough of the, the directional flow of where the lines go. And after that, it really is just all about having the patience um, to work at adding the detail little by little. I want to give a quick shout-out to my patrons on Patreon who suggested this idea of uh, doing an owl video. I think I'm going to start doing that more often getting my video ideas from the uh, patrons on Patreon. So if you would like to have more of a say in uh, what my upcoming videos are about, go ahead and check out my Patreon. I'll put a link 
in the description. But before I go, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like The Drawing Lesson. We've got the sequel to that coming out. The Comic Book Lesson should be able to do an unboxing soon. The Two Pencil Method, which is of course the method that you saw on display in today's video. And, as always, Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, my series of books on drawing in a manga style. But I think it's high time I lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.